Greetings and welcome, my name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this Game Maker Studio tutorial, I'm going to be showing you the basics of collisions. Now, Game Maker Studio has split this up into two types of simple collision and advanced collision checking. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to split this into two different tutorials. If you know about collisions and you've been using simple collision checking for a while, then go ahead and jump on over to Collision Basics 102. I'll put a card up for that. And if you haven't, then this would be a great place to start. Let me show you what I'm going to be teaching about in this. Uh, simple collisions, despite their name, are very powerful and they are just simple to use, but they're still very useful. Okay, so we're going to have a project where we have a character that can walk around. And this brick wall right here is going to be something that we can run into, but that we can't get stuck in at all. And we're going to have this blue wall, which is like a ghost wall that we can move right through. And then a tree that we can't hit the base, but we can go behind it. Okay. That is what I'm going to be showing you how to set up. So let's go ahead and jump right in. These functions, I'm not going to walk through one at a time because I don't think you need to see them that way. The one I want to show you most is placed free as I find it the most useful. It's a function that just takes two arguments, an X and a Y coordinate, and it just checks to see is that place occupied by an object that is flagged as solid. If it is, do not move there. If it's not, then you are free to go. So I'm going to show you how this can be super useful when you are moving around, especially for a player character so they don't get stuck on objects. Let's get started on that. So we're going to create a sprite. We're going to come in here, and this is going to be a very simple sprite because I am not an artist. We're going to create that. We're going to create a straight line and a little bit larger, just like the ones I showed you. might be a little different with the stripes, but hey, that's okay. We're going to exit out of this and we're going to name this SPR brick wall. And we're going to center this. Then we're going to come in and we're going to make an object with it as well. So create an object, OBJ brick wall. Assign it that sprite. And then we're going to go into our room and we're going to put that brick wall in. And just going to assign it all over here. And I got the order a little bit out. Okay, there we go. And we'll put one right there. Now, if we run this, nothing is going to happen yet. Uh, because it's an object, but Sarah's going to go right behind it because it's the last object added. And nothing happened. It's not solid. It's not collision checking. Even though they're both objects, nothing is actually happening yet. And so now let's go and fix that problem. So let's go ahead and check on Sarah. She is marked as solid, but the brick wall is not. Now, marking something as solid is only useful in the collision detection. So if you have looked at the events at all, you know that there is an actual collision here. So we could come in here and on either one, the brick wall or on Sarah, we can add a collision. And if we do that, because they're marked as solid, it is actually going to work now. So she will run into this and not be able to go through it at all. Now, here's a slight problem. If I'm holding over and I try to move down or up, she is not moving. She's actually stuck on this wall because the collision detection only happens when the two objects are actually running into each other. So they are colliding, and then she can't go up or down because she is in mid-collision with this brick wall. And we don't want that to happen. It is very janky movement and does not feel good for the player. So we're actually going to delete this because we don't want it to be a physical collision. We don't want them to actually be touching yet. Instead, we're going to come into Object Sarah, and we're going to go to her Create Event, and we are going to add in a variable. This is going to be called collision speed and I'm going to put it equal to walk speed plus two and this will make sense in just a second as we're going to jump over here and what we want to do is use this place free function so we're going to put in two ampersands which is also and either one works uh, and we're going to say place free now we just need an x and a y coordinate so the x over pressing on D is we're going over and you can tell that because it says X plus so we're gonna do X plus we're gonna do collision speed now the reason that we're using a collision speed is because 
if we used the walk speed, there can still be instances when we are actually trying to go in a certain direction, going up, up and over, or left and down, or something like that, and we still are running into it too much because we're checking the exact amount of pixels we want to move, and it can still cause issues. But if we are checking just a little bit, just a fraction beyond what we are attempting to move, then it'll still look great and we won't run into any of those errors. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this and just check it for every direction that we're moving. So we're gonna do X minus collision speed Y and place free, we're gonna do Y, uh, so X and then Y minus collision speed. And we're gonna do and place free x, y, plus collision speed. We'll save that, and now let's go ahead and run it. Sarah will run into these bricks, but she won't be able to get stuck anymore. So I'm moving over, and it looks great. No longer, you can see that she has just a fraction, like, well, two pixels there that she's not running into it, but I still think that looks great. If you need even more, then go down to one. And if that's even too much, then you can alter your sprites to actually make them work better. So that is using Place Free, a simple collision detection. Now, Place Free works on the instances as they are marked solid. Now, if they are not marked solid, then it won't work. So let's go ahead and create another sprite. We'll call this Ghost Wall. We'll fill it up blue, and then we'll do a little bit of transparency. And just mark it like this. Okay. Now, let's center it. Create an object for the ghost wall. Assign it that sprite. And do not mark it solid. Come into the room, place it right there, and we'll run the game. Now, Sarah will pass right through it because even though she is solid, the function that we are checking, place free, checks to see if the instance that we are going to run into is solid and this one is not. So that is a simple collision detection for uh, images and objects actually running into each other. Now, the way that it works is they are marked solid, but the actual collision detection is being done on what's called a collision mask. So if we open up our sprite brick wall, right down here is a collision mask. And it is normally set to automatic right here. But if we wanted to, we can actually come in here, we can do it manual. You can change it to an ellipse, a diamond, uh, precise, which would actually cover the exact model of the sprite. Like if we came up to Sarah, and we went to the collision mask and we said precise, you can see here that it actually goes all exactly around her. No longer does it cover the entire frame uh, as it would if we did like a rectangle where it covers even the empty space. Uh, it only covers her. Now you can tell that it says slow because it uses more processing power. So if you do this on a few objects, it's gonna be okay. If you do it on every single one, and you have a lot of sprites in your game, it might start slowing it down, okay? So I'm gonna leave that as rectangle for her, but if we come up to the brick wall, and we can actually alter this, we can come in here, and if I set that just in the middle of it, well now all of a sudden, even though the sprite hasn't changed at all, we're actually able to go into this wall, because that collision mask is what our detection is looking for. And the collision mask can be altered even while the game is running, you can change collision masks. Now, let me show you something really cool. If we import a sprite, so I have a sprite tree. Now, I'm gonna make an object for this. You don't have to follow along on this part. Let me just show you something really cool and how I did the thing with the tree in the beginning. We're going to set that there. We're going to go back to the sprite. And on the collision mask, for the tree, obviously you might not want to have them be able to run into the whole tree because it doesn't make sense. A tree goes up, as we know. Even in a 2D game, even if it looks like it, the player should be able to go behind the tree. And you can see here that I've moved the collision mask 
just to cover the base of the tree. And when it is covering only the base, then the player can walk behind it. And that makes for a much more realistic collision when it comes to objects that are up in the sky. You alter the collision mask to then make it so that they can move behind it or in front of it, however that it should look in your game. Now, inside of the tree, if you wanted to have it fade like I showed in the beginning, it's a really simple thing and it covers the more advanced, but let me show you a practical use for it. Inside of the step, we can actually come over here and all we have to do is say, if collision circle, which if you're wondering how this works, go uh, at the end of this, jump over to 102 and I will explain it even more. We're gonna say XY 15 OBJ Sarah, true and true. We're gonna set the image alpha equal to 0.25 and then else image alpha will equal one. And then inside of our room, we'll throw this tree and run the game. And you'll see once again, like at the beginning, we're able to walk behind it and make it go invisible as we do, okay? So that's part of the advanced collision checking that you can do, and we will get into that as we go along. Now, I did not mark this tree as solid, so we're able to walk along the whole thing, which is very awkward. But that's what I've got for you guys. That is the basics of collisions. You need to have your objects marked as solid, and then you can run into them, and you can do awesome things like this. Collisions are super important in your game. Any, any game you make will probably be using collisions, whether that is a platformer, an RPG, a shoot 'em up it doesn't matter. Your, your objects are going to be running into each other and they need to know how to react and where to go and where they are not allowed to go. Hopefully this was helpful and that's all I've got for you guys. Thanks for joining me and as always, have fun making great games and I will talk to you later. Hey there. Uh, I've got a Patreon, if you didn't know. If you'd like to support me, that would be great. Up on the screen are the people who are pledging enough to get their name in the credits. They are helping fund this YouTube channel, which is awesome. I just want to give a shout out to them and all that they do to help me do this. It's great. If you would like to join, uh, you can click on the link at the end of the video or in the description below. Thank you. Thank you.